Alright guys, welcome to part 14 I believe um, So I kind of did a little more work after part 13 off camera Just because I didn't want to bore you guys with just like the fine details and just getting a visual stuff So let me turn around and show you guys So I took off as you can see all that little wall barrier Some parts came off that shouldn't have came off But that's okay because that's, that's easily fixed so I took it off just so I could get the design and shape a little better. I'm still working on getting all the measurements like for over there, for example, to over there, because that needs to be built up a little bit. The center line's coming out kind of nicely. Still needs a little work. The underneath, sorry, all the old sounds, I'm getting very old. See the underneath and this side's coming out pretty nice this side I still need to cut all that and shape that so that's ignore that but right now my main focus is the top half and I went ahead and I just threw a light coat of primer on this fender just so I could get a better visual of the car as I'm working on it and like this I could see right there you can see all the imperfections that need to be sanded out right here this is a high spot that i got missed so i need to sand that out these are lines in the body line that need to get sanded out so i just cut a couple little errors i didn't do this because the whole, this whole strip is going to be cut and grinded together and uh, i mean bonded together so i didn't worry about that but the rest of it actually came out really really nice so i'm happy with that but yeah, the goal was just so I could sit down right here and look and see the body and the bumper as one. Obviously, there's going to be a front lip that's going to go on later on. But I just wanted to like not have 15 different colors over there and, you know, 15 different colors over here. So like this, that whole section of the car is kind of like uniform. And I just need to worry about designing this. Yeah, let me show you guys some better angles of this fender once this bmw is gone it'll be some better shots i was thinking of doing something like the porsche gt3 rs's have like the the clothes off here so that's that's a possibility in the future and a lot of you guys you guys said in the description of my sh not in the description sorry a lot of you guys were mentioning in my shorts that um, I should do an aggressive front lip, kind of like a modular one. Like that's kind of the goal, is to have a front lip that kind of sits on, bolts on to like the bottom over here. I, I could add, you know, metal brackets so it's like frame mounted. But like this, I could have it connect kind of like the, the C7s had on the Z06 where they had that little flat piece right here so that's not a bad idea but actually looks really good primer now at this can't wait to get this front bumper done but uh i'm gonna go ahead and set up some time lapses and show you guys kind of the next step moving forward So that kind of wraps up um, today's part of the video. So tomorrow I'll continue more. Um, all I did is I filled up this corner, filled up the edges. I needed some work. I kind of forgot about this, but that's not a big deal. I filled up this cavity, this cavity. Kind of just filled up anything that needed to be filled up so I could sand tomorrow. 
but tomorrow's goal I'm probably gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the foam I'm gonna leave this for now just so I can sleep on it and see how it looks but yeah let me uh, clean up and I'll see you guys tomorrow all right so I kind of went ahead and took the hood off I sanded this area a bit sorry about the mess it's all dusty but the c3s do this weird thing where it's like it's like bold it's not like a perfect line so even the hood like in that area right there there's a weird little going on so let me just make sure this is yeah so what i did i'm actually going to show you guys this on camera right now hopefully it doesn't mess up you know i should not what the heck is going on across the street by the parade but yeah so what i did is um i laid down two tapes two tape lines so you see the pencil marks right there so first of all i sanded the whole front one second there's some crazy noise in the back okay i'm gonna have to film i'm gonna have to film over it because they're practicing for the parade but yeah so what i did was I sand this whole da thing down and I used two tape lines to mark the center line. So now I went ahead and added a, st a strip of Bondo on the opposite side of the tape line as you guys saw where I peeled it off from. I'm gonna let this cure and then I'm gonna go ahead and run a tape line on top of it, run a second strip of Bondo and then like this it's gonna be hard to see. Let's see if this captures it. There we go. So there's gonna be a slight little body line right there that's gonna form. And it's gonna be a little more sharp than the original body line on the car. But that's kind of like what I want because it was hard. like, I couldn't really find, like I found it, but it wasn't straight. Like, like see, it's kind of like what I did here where like I made it visible and sharp, but once I go over that with like a 240 grit, it's gonna knock it down a little bit. So yeah, there we go. The front bumper is coming along very nicely. Cut most of the foam out, just gotta start shaping that. Gotta fill in all this with a little more filler. It's a, you know, it's a repetitive process. I put it in, I sand it off, put it in, I sand it off. So yeah, there's the, the cleaned out guts. All right, so I was fighting this car. No, I wasn't fighting it. I sat down here earlier, just to take a break and have a little coffee. And I'm like, why earlier the car was, this side was six inches lower than this side. And at first, I was like, what? It made no sense because it looked level, but I was going level on the ground. So when I zoom in right there, you can see it's almost level. I gotta raise it a little bit higher, but the, the leveler might not be sitting straight. So I was like, why, why am I not, like, why am I seeing, like, when I sat down, I saw the hood latch on this side and not this side. So I was like, why is that? And then I realized, like, if I take the ground out of the equation, now the car is sitting level. It wasn't a big deal. Like, it didn't affect none of my measurements or the build or anything like that right now. But, uh, that body line looking crisp, though. Look at that. It's got to finish it. So let me show you guys what I did. So I went ahead and... Just sanded this down more. I still gotta sand it a little bit more, but I'm pretty much gonna wrap it up for today almost. So I sanded that down. I sanded this a little bit. I'm trying to clean up this edge. Uh, I'm gonna tackle this section tomorrow. It's too, getting too late in the day right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's moving along. Oh, yeah, see? See, that's pretty level. I guess I was just having 
it was just a visual thing i guess looking at the car and the ground being so far on this side and not being that far on that side like if i step back over here the car looks crooked as hell but it's not it's just it's honestly just an illusion because of the ground the the whole driveway sweeps down which is really annoying but once i get this boat in the bmw out of the way i might turn the car around again and level it this way on that side so we'll see As you guys saw on the time lapse, I'm back on the car. I take a couple days off for Memorial Day weekend and work. But yeah, so right now I'm starting to fill in this side to match that side. And I may have misplaced some of my chemicals that I have no idea where they are. It's either in the garage or somewhere in the house. But I need to get foam to fill in this lower lip. Like I was talking about the Z01 kind of like style. So right now I gotta figure out if I can find it or I need to order it and so I can continue this. Because once I get this piece figured out, then I could really go ahead and see the whole bumper as one. So right now I'm really just gonna be chipping away at this and maybe cutting because you can see this section goes further into the fender than uh further into the car than it really needs to. Let me see if I could turn this around so you guys can see. So the body line is like somewhere around here. I think it's, it's oh, right here. Like it goes like from this point to this point. It's like a little curve. You can almost see it right there. So I need to copy that on the inside because it makes no sense to have the bumper all the way into here on the inside when it, you know, that's just unnecessary. Like you can see, it's awful. You can see how far it goes in there when in reality all i need to do is just cut that section off but that's not a big deal right now maybe i'll focus on the foam underneath get all this worked out cut out and cleaned up It's a new day and I found my chemicals. I was having a heart attack because I knew I put all my chemicals away for the winter and I couldn't find them and I knew I had them. I didn't want to order any more because they're not that expensive but they're pricey and I'm gonna have to order more anyways but I didn't want to waste the money now. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video in this time lapse you're gonna be seeing is I'm gonna set up the base plate for the for the front splitter. So I'm gonna set it up, create the bottom of the bumper, and it'll be a step lip. You, you're gonna see what I'm doing, like hopefully in this video. But that's what I've been waiting to move forward with the bumper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started now. <music> Okay, so you guys saw in the time lapse, I built this box kind of looking thing. So this is what I'm gonna do is, the reason I wrap this in foil, 
because it will be easier to remove the foam once it's a solid piece and I could reuse this wood because it's actually really good wood I could reuse it for the projects or the the second layer of the lip I don't know but just to save it to like what a couple bucks in aluminum foil not a big deal but yeah I built a wall this is where I'm gonna pour all the foam you're gonna see in the time lapse this thing is freaking reflecting and it's blinding me but yeah so I'm gonna pour the foam and all I need is like this, this much like two three inches because I'll sand it down and shave it down so I'm just setting I'm gonna level it right now so because right now it's all like tilted and down so it's gonna pull into that corner so I'm just gonna go ahead and level as best as I can and go ahead and start mixing the foam reason that formed like a little cave so that's how you saw me with the little chopstick toothpick um, popsicle stick I was like pushing it in, in a little crevices that it wasn't you know for some reason like caves were forming I wonder if it was just it was because it wasn't sticking through aluminum foil but yeah so this is good this is good I don't need it much more that this whole section is gonna rise and once it rises I could go ahead and cut it down and do what I gotta do because I don't need too much. This is just the filler piece for the bottom of the bumper. But yeah. New day. Sorry about these damn birds. Like the freaking having an orchestra out here. Um, this kind of swelled up. Not swelled up, but it uh, it, it lifted on the two sides and not in the middle. I don't know why, but I bet you it's yeah. Yeah, you can just pop it right off. So now it's gonna be a little crooked. But what I could do is I could take it and I could work it as a foam block and I'm not too concerned if, it, if it's twisted a little bit because I could just prop it up with the wood and straighten it out like if, even if I have to like sand it straight and then use a filler to um to make it look better but I just needed that raw block because now I could cut it and put it into the opening down there so let's get started on that saw me in the time lapse I'm pretty much trying to get that as even I guess like as smooth as flat and square as I can I didn't do the edges you can see it's a little wobbly over here but that's not a big deal because so what I'm just trying to do right now is just to get this flat piece that fits in between these two points and then I'm gonna go ahead and support like I'm probably gonna fill it up with filler now and then slap it on so it's like removable I could, I could take it off and sand I don't have to like find myself in there so that's gonna I'm gonna be working on right now and um, 
I'm just gonna skip to the part where all this is clean and I'm starting to fill that in with um, the jointing compound, there you go. Sorry if I look like shit, it's like 90 degrees outside and it's sunny as hell. So I just came into the garage, you guys saw on the time lapse, I was... So that piece of foam, it's gonna be near impossible for me to get it smooth without making a hard, like a hard surface first. So what I'm doing, what I did in the time lapse, it I, is I used the, um, the jointing compound to create the first layer on top to give it a little more stiffness then I'm gonna go ahead and do a layer on the bottom tomorrow and then when I put it on the car to mock it up I'm gonna do an outline of the shape I want in a pencil or a sharpie because I what on this filler once it dries I could sketch on it no problem so once that I get the shape sketched on then I'm gonna go ahead and build the jointing compound higher to the point where I can leave it in the sun, let it dry, and then I can go ahead and just sand the jointing compound to where it's level, get the get the step I want in for the bottom of the bumper, get all that get all that etched into the jointing compound. And I just I don't have to worry about the foam. Because with the foam, it's like you could get it flat. But on a thin strip like this, you don't know if it's gonna be you're gonna be heavy on one side, light on one side, and this foam it's so if you don't mix it right, if the temperature's off, if there's an air pocket or whatever, you could have uniform foam but on the surface, but on the bottom, like here actually. Okay. So you could see like here it's a little more dense and um and it's like crunchier foam over there it's a lot softer and it's it's not as dense like that soft foam like you see how it's moving compared to like right here like you can hear you can hear how crunchy that is so you can see the different like layers of this foam and how it dries so what i'm gonna do is just maybe tomorrow i'll put one more layer on the surface just I want to see how stiff it's gonna be and then I'll do the bottom and for this the lip what I'm gonna do is you can see on the Corvette it has that like the front nose I'm gonna have I'm gonna find where those two points on the bumper meet and I'm gonna do like a slight little little like a inner lip like a slight little one you'll see when I, when um when I get it mocked up on the car but for right now, this is kind of the steps because this piece is going to be the top. Like imagine this is how it's going to look. This is going to be the top and then there's going to be a lip on the bottom and this is going to be a step. So these two pieces are going to be separate from the bumper because at this, if I crack the lip, I could just unbolt it and slap a new one on and don't have to worry about the bumper because the bumper, once it's done, it's gonna be molded in so there's not gonna be any body lines like I'm trying to get rid of all the body lines I can like if it wasn't such a big project I probably would have done the, um, the tilt nose hood like the whole front clip tilt forward but that's just that's that's a nightmare I'm not trying to get involved with that but yeah this is today hopefully tomorrow you guys get a, a kind of a sneak peek of what this is gonna look like and this edge is not cut yet I didn't want to cut this edge because this is gonna be the back edge this is this piece of plywood is from Lufthansa and it's the most like on point piece of plywood like I've ever seen it's literally perfectly squared and it's like solid like you come you know you get wood from Home Depot that thing is like bent 15,000 different ways so what I did is I created three points well two this point and that point they're all perfectly square this is not this is this is all like like 
wave you see it's thicker here thinner there So the whole purpose that the reason I did that is because this is gonna come towards the back. So this is gonna give me a I'm gonna line these two points with the back of that fender. And it's gonna tell me, okay, this is the front end and how far the front end is gonna need to, you know, stick out. And like this, it, imagine like like a slight curve on this on this piece. So a little slight curve to match the front bumper. And that's gonna fill in the bottom. I'll show you guys tomorrow.